welcome back uh, ladies and gentlemen and youngsters and, and, and anybody who is watching our program Wisdom of Islam. Uh, this is the third segment of our show and the last segment of our show. Um, now in this segment uh, uh, Mulana Fahad uh, uh, will be giving us uh, some, some uh, uh, moral story and, and, and would be giving us some uh, teaching through that story. Uh, so let's turn to him and ask him uh, what is today's uh, moral story. So, Malana Fahad, uh, Farmaye, what do you have for us today? Today's story is also uh, very interesting. It's about a pious man, a holy man, a pious okay. man. Okay. You know, they call it Buzur. So, one time he was walking by on the street and then he saw from the other side that there was some people coming and they were carrying uh, containers, big containers of alcohol. Mm -hmm. And he asked, what is this alcohol doing here? And those people who were carrying, they said, uh, this is the alcohol belongs to, this alcohol belongs to the king. Mm -hmm. So we bought this for the king and we are taking to him. So he felt really bad that we are living in an Islamic country and uh, the king is Muslim and this is a Muslim environment. All, everybody is Muslim, majority is Muslim. So what is the purpose of alcohol? And that much of alcohol openly getting transported? He did not feel right about it. He said, okay. if I don't stop them, what? how am I going to answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that something wrong was happening in front of my eyes? And I did not respond to that. Right. I, you know, So anytime you see evil, you have to stop it. Yeah. Or if you can't stop it, then you have to do something. You have to say something. And if you don't say something, then according to the hadith, you at least have to feel bad about it. Right. So he went ahead and started breaking those containers. So what happened? Though? All the alcohol got wasted. You know? Right. And he, uh, there was 100 containers, and out of the 100 containers, he broke 99, and he left one. Now, everybody's surprised. Why did he leave one? But anyways, uh, he went to the, the, those people. They went to the king, and the king said, where is my alcohol? He said, that such and such crazy man, you know, he came, and he stopped us, and that's what he did. The king said, and he did not break the last one? Why, how, how can he do that? What is the reason why he did not break the last one? And why did he break my containers? It was mine. So he told the, those guys to go get him arrested. And he yeah. got summoned in the palace. Yeah. Yeah. Now he, when he was presented in front of the king, king asked, you are a holy man, you are a reasonable man. Why did you do all that? Yeah. And he said, because this is Allah's land. It is the land of Allah. And if there is a constitution, it has to be the constitution of Allah. And it is forbidden in Islam. So I felt really bad that it's Islamic rule. You're a Muslim. And you're, uh, it is your alcohol that is getting transported. So I, did not, I could not bear that. And that's what I did. I started breaking those. King, since he was Muslim, he had a soft heart. He did not punish him right away. But he asked him, you broke 99. Why did you not break the last one? Why did right. you leave that? Yeah. So this pious holy man, he said, you know, when I was breaking the 99, I felt every time I would break a container, I felt this, this is I'm doing for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. I had the sincerity in my heart. And when it came to the last one, I started feeling so proud of myself because when you are by the end of the race, yeah. you feel that yeah. uh, yeah. extra excitement. So by this extra excitement, I felt that I'm such a great man. I'm so brave that I'm not even, I don't even fear the punishment of the king. Yeah. I'm so fearless and this is how great I am that I cannot stand anybody to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. So this is what I start feeling. So when I start feeling that, I did not want to break any other container or but uh, to please myself so i did not break that one because it was against the sincerity so i left that and the other i 99 i broke for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when the king heard this this level of sincerity he his heart melted and he made tawbah he made repentance on the heart on yeah. the hands of this pious man yeah and he said that it's good that you advised me and somebody opened my eyes and he was very grateful to the person and the moral of the story is that you have to be sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah, Anything yeah. you do, just like Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu, when he was in a battle and, uh, with the Jewish man, and he almost, uh, Ali radiallahu anhu got him on his chest. Yeah. He put him on the f ground, got him on his chest, and he was about to take care of him. Yeah. And right at that time, that Jewish man, he had nothing else to do, but he spat on the blessed face of uh, Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu. Yeah. And then right at that moment, Ali radiallahu anhu stepped away. Yeah. Yeah. And he asked, Ali, what happened? Why did you not kill me? This is the time. 
Ali radiallahu anhu said that before I was fighting you because of the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because I'm the servant of Allah. I'm right. the slave of my Lord, Allah. Right. Yeah. But this time when you spat on me, it yeah. got me personally, you angered me. Yeah. And if I were to kill you now, it would be for my own anger. Right. I'm slave of Allah, wow. but I'm not the slave of Look my own the desires. Wow. I'm slave of Allah. I'm not the slave of my own desires. Right. So I'm not going to follow my desires. That's why I let you go. That time, Jewish, his man, his heart melted. He said, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. He accepted Islam. Yeah. So this is the religion of sincerity. Anything we do in our daily lives for the sake of Allah. You don't have to come it is not only in the salah that you have to consider the sincerity you go for the job you work you go to school you have to make intention this is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I'm not doing to please anyone yeah. I'm just, if I'm making an earning this is to please Allah because this is my responsibility yeah. to feed my family yeah. if I'm learning this is for the sake of Allah because this way I'm going to uh, benefit the deen of Allah so every step you can change your niyyah and then every moment of your t life it becomes the ibadah right. it becomes something that would be counted for in the hereafter awesome very good very very good e e beautiful story um Malana fahad before we uh, end our show I, i'm going to ask you uh, one simple kind of question and and uh, and i would i would uh, request you to give us a simple answer easy answer and this is uh, this is uh, about salah yes. this is about uh, you know namaz this is about the prayers that we do five times a day I would want you uh, to tell us a little bit about uh, uh, namaz, you know, uh, not how to do it, but, but you know, uh, how many uh, uh, rakat in each namaz and what are the timings and how should we do it because some people uh, probably would, would love to hear this from you. Yes, especially just because, as you said, this is this program is designed for our youngsters. Yes, a lot of our young children they are not aware of the importance of the salah, and right. or they are not aware of how to perform, or what should be the quantity and what should be the quality. Right. Just to summarize everything, that salah is the key to the jannah. Right. Salah is the pleasure of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Salah is the coolness of, of the eyes of the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You cannot, you cannot do, if you, ha if you have to do one thing in your life, it has to, you have to preserve your salah. Right. You cannot do anything without the salah. So this is how important it is. It's the pillar of Islam. This differentiates between the mu'min and the kafir. Yeah. Between the believer and the non-believer, if there is a thing that would differentiate, it's the salah. Why do I say that? Because everything else is in your heart. You believe in the oneness of Allah, you believe in the Prophet of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa you live, believe in the hereafter, it's in my heart, nobody sees it. Something that can distinguish you uh, between you and a kafir is your salah, because this, this is something that has a physical form. This is somebody, this is how you would be judged. So with that said, uh, about the importance of the salah, uh, how much salah to pray? You have to pray all five, uh, okay. five so you have to pray five times Everything a day. Everything is a must. Everything is a must. Okay. Bare minimum is five times a day. Yeah. Uh, starting from Fajr. Right. For Fajr, it's very important for you to pray the Sunnah of the Fajr. So no. Rasulullah Before yeah, the first. Yeah, before the first. So two Sunnah and two first. Right. So that's four rakah. People might say this is uh, optional just because it's called Sunnah. Right. Yes, it's optional because it's sunnah, but this is sunnat muakkada Sunnat muakkada means these are emphasized sunnah. These are right. the sunnah that you have to do. Right. And uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, there is nothing in the universe upon which the sun shines is better than the two rakahs of the fajr. So these are how important it is. So you pray two rakah of sunnah, and then you pray two rakah fard. Right. Then the zohar time, you pray four rakah sunnat muakkada four rakat of farz and then you pray two rakat of sunnat al okay so these are ten rakat which are necessary for zohar and then there's two rakat nafil which is optional right then you come for the asr salah yeah there is four sunnah and four farz right the four sunnah are optional these are not as important as the other sunnahs yes okay. but four rakat of the uh, and then four farz of the asr then comes the maghrib maghrib is three farz Two sunnah mandatory, right. nece absolute mes necessary, and then there's two nafal which is optional. Okay. So you have uh, seven, right. out of which five is necessary. 
and then uh, there is Isha Sala, which is a little bit lengthy. Yes. But there is a lot of optional too. So let me tell you the whole thing. The whole Sala is four Sunnah, four Fars, two Sunnah, two Nafil, three Witr, and two Nafil. Right. This is the full Sala. But if somebody wants to shorten it, the first four Sunnah is optional. Then you have to definitely pray the four Fars. Right. After the four Fars, the two Sunnah is mandatory. And after that, the Nafil is optional. Then three Witr is mandatory. Uh, absolute necessary and then you have uh, two nafal which is optional so ba basically four for two sunnah and Hand three vitr is absolute necessary and others are optional that you can skip uh, if, you, if want you want to skip you can skip yeah wow. but you should if you follow and fulfill it it's always better very very good you know i i, I just uh, wanted to touch uh, very basics uh, of of uh, salah I, I i didn't want to go into the details and inshallah in one of the next programs we would go into the details the details okay? of the salah sure. uh, and 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 i appreciate your time so very much you you have no thank idea thank you very much you know how, how good this is for for our listeners it's unbelievable thanks for uh, inviting me also of, of course so so uh, uh, time is ending here so, so um, I'm going to say uh, uh, Hafiz, Allah Hafiz to you and I am going to say uh, wish you all the best and, and would request you to please uh, send us your questions uh, by calling us on 347-766-8784 or you can email us at info at rahim.tv info at rahim.tv R-A-H-A-M Rahim um, so that we can include your questions, your suggestions, your opinion about this show uh, in our next show, we would we would uh, be uh, we would be happy to see you again. Until then, please look after yourself, take care of yourself, and Allah Hafiz. Assalamualaikum.